My name's Beck, and I've been asked by the Encroniac Celtic Gathering 2020 to tell you a story from Cornwall, which is where I live. There are lots of stories in Cornwall, and it was hard for me to decide which story to tell you, but me agar and more, I love the sea, and so I've decided to tell you the story of a mermaid, the Mermaid of Zena, and I'm going to use this book by Charles Causley. It's his version of the story, and this book is illustrated by Michael Foreman. I really hope you enjoy it. The Mermaid of Zena. Zena lies beside the Cornish Sea in West Penwith, the most mysterious part of all of Cornwall. There are no trees. The land wears only a thin covering of earth and scattered about are reminders of folk who lived there thousands of years ago. There are standing stones, cromlechs, huge granite boulders which were thought to have been used by the giants when they were arguing or playing their games, and everywhere still are the stone stacks and chimneys and engine houses marking the presence of the tin mines. Now, here lived Zaki Pender. He was a farmer's son whose home was a mile or more from any neighbour. But this didn't bother him at all. He was not a lonely boy. He simply enjoyed his own company and was never happier than when he was wandering the cliffs or high up on the moor or making up his own stories in his head. And Zaki was just as happy singing in the church choir on Sunday. He had a beautiful voice. And it was said in those days that the people of Zenahab were the finest singers in the whole of Kurnow. And Zaki was no exception. Nor was Zaki's friend, Tom Taskis. Tom Taskis was a tin mining man. Six days out of seven, he worked in the dark and heat and damp of the mine. He lived in a little granite cottage halfway between Zaki's home and the church. Now, every Sunday morning, Zaki would call on Tom and together they would go to the church to sing in the choir. They made a fine pair, strolling along together, scrubbed up, smart in their Sunday best. They didn't say much. But if Zaki had had an older brother, it was clear he would have wished him to be very much like Tom. And likewise, Tom with Zaki. Now, I'm going to see if I can show you. It's quite hard on the... <coughs> there they are dressed up in their Sunday best, and that's Zena Church, still there today. It was one sunny Sunday morning when Zaki first noticed the beautiful young woman sitting very straight in the single pew oak chair at the very back of the church. Tom had noticed her too. She was a pretty girl and no mistake. Her hair where it escaped from her bonnet was shaped curiously like a shell and it shone like a coil of gold and her gown oh it was a glimmering silken silver that swelled about her like waves in the sea now the next monday she appeared again in her chosen place and the sunday after that and the sunday after that each time leaving as mysteriously as she had appeared Every time they saw her, Zaki and Tom exchanged glances as if to say, here she is again then. But strangely, neither mentioned it to the other. It didn't seem to be necessary to do so. Now, I <clears throat> don't know if you can see there. There she is, sitting in the back of the church. She was certainly a beauty. <clears throat> On the seventh Sunday, the most remarkable thing happened of all. Whilst the rest of the choir were busy singing their last hymn, Tom Taskis suddenly stepped out of his choir stool and walked straight down the aisle to where the lovely girl was standing. He took her by the hand and together they disappeared out of the great doorway. Nobody seemed to notice. Nobody that is except Zaki Pender. As soon as ever he could, Zaki was racing down the churchyard steps after them, he squizzed and he squinted this way and that, but he couldn't see anyone, nobody. Then he spied the couple. 
at once he made after them, keeping well out of sight himself. And when Tom Taskis and the stranger reached the rushing stream with no name that plunged high from the moor down to the sea, what did they do but leap hand in hand into the peaty water? As they did so, Tom Taskis caught Zaki's eye and placed a finger across his lips as if to say, don't say a word, my friend. Then the stranger's glimmering robe fell away and Saki saw that she didn't have human feet at all, but a pair of glimmering fish's fins. She was a merry maid. <gasps> Zaki was so surprised and delighted, he could barely think. As for telling the rest of the village, well, who would believe such a tale from Zaki, the maker of stories? I wonder if I can show you there. There they are leaping into the peaty water and there's little Zaki at the back there, look. <laughs> Almost a year drifted by. Curiously, nothing much was said in the village of the strange affair of Tom Taskis and his disappearance. Such things happened quite often in Zena. Without a word to others, young women and especially men would leave their homes and try and find fortunes beyond Cornwall and often beyond the sea. At first, Zaki missed his friend, but as the weeks and months went by, well, it seemed almost to be forgotten. It took an October gale the fiercest along the coast for many years to blow it back into his mind again. Zaki lay in his bed, marvelling at the sounds of the winds and the waves. He thought of the stories he'd heard of fine sailing ships that were taken refuge in the cove at Zena to escape the anger of the seas. But Zaki had never seen a single one. All at once he made up his mind. It's now or never, he thought, so he tugged on his trousers crept downstairs and hitched his oilskins across his shoulders and then he gently let himself out the back door. Night was turning into day and Zaki hurried through the village. He made his way towards the cliff top. Would he see a sailing ship? It was if, as if the sea answered his question. What did he find? He heard from far below Zena Head a great thrust of water burst from the famous blowhole. Down there in which the stormy weather swallows up great gulps of the high sea only to spray them out hundreds of feet or more above the cliff top. The waters rose up in a huge curve over Zaki's head and fell into the earth beyond him, exploding in millions of watery fragments. Zaki threw up his arms to protect himself from the salt sea drops and for a moment it blinded him. I can show you that. Then there was such a sound as he had never heard in his life. It was the strangest small cry, a kind of keening or wailing. Woohoo! 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 It had something of the low moan of a razor bill, or the tiny grizzle of a puffin, or the sorrowful hoo hee of a seal. Very cautiously, Zaki opened one eye, then the other. What do you think he saw? Directly in front of him, soft and safe on a bed of bracken and heather, lay a baby. It clenched and unclenched its fist and waved its arms wildly, but it was no earthly child. The lower half of its body was that of a fish, and instead of feet it had a pair of tiny shiny fins that were turning this way and that, no doubt about it, this was a merry child and its mother must have been the mermaid, the merry maid. It was the most beautiful creature that Zaki had ever seen. It started up at Zaki, plainly in terror of its life. Zaki had no notion of whether or not the merry ch child could understand him, but he said in a quiet voice, Don't worry, me dear. It was his kindest voice. I'll soon see you safely back to where you belong. Seizing up the merry child and holding it tight, Zaki turned as fast as he could and ran back the way he had come. At last he reached the stream with no name, and as he made to follow its course down to the cove, he saw a second astonishing sight. 
let me quickly show you the first day beautiful mer child there she is <laughs> swimming powerfully upstream the lovely mermaid of all those sundays before could be seen and in its joy at the sight of the merry maid the little mer child almost slipped out of zaki's hold with an amazing leap through the air, the merry maid grasped the merry child from Zaki's arms, turned about and re-entered the stream and raced down to the cove. As she did so, she smiled at Zaki, a wonderful smile. From a cluster of what looked like jewels about her throat, she threw him a small, gleaming object. As it flew through the air, it flashed in the morning light. Zaki caught it easily. It was a curious little shell the like of which he had never seen before. It was silver on the outside and on the inside was pure gold. Now, let me show you there. There she is catching her little baby. Again, Zaki told no one of what had happened and what he had seen. Soon it was the summer again and Zaki was working in the field with his father, with his back to the sea. We could never really tell what made him suddenly spin round and look at the ocean far below. Lying in the bay was a handsome sailing ship. There were three seamen and a fourth man, seemingly the captain, in the act of lowering the anchor. This done, they leaned against the ship's side and were gazing out to the sea, and quite without warning, a figure rose from the depths of the sea and broke the calm of the water. It was the Merry Maid. Her voice was pure as the note of a bell and it floated up to where Zaki was standing. Captain, she called, please, please raise the anchor. It is lodged directly in front of the entrance of my secret cave beneath the waters. I cannot enter. My dear children and husband are imprisoned within. Not wishing to harm or offend the creature, the captain and his men weighed anchor at full speed. As it was hauled dripping from the sea, the merry maid plunged out of sight. And at that very moment, a strong breeze filled the sails of the ship and it moved gracefully out of the cove. You can see. There she is. Almost at once, the merry maid reappeared, smiling. At her side, also smiling, was a handsome, dark-haired young man. Zaki recognised him at once. It was Tom Taskis, his friend. A smaller figure came to the surface, its golden hair glinting in the sun. It was the very same merry child, now grown a little older, that Zaki had rescued the night of the storm. Another merry child arrived, and then another and another. Seven in all. By this time, the Merry Maid and Tom Tasket had, had spotted Zaki on the clifftop, and soon the Merry Children saw him too. Smiling, the Merry Maid and Tom Tasket and all the Merry Children swam in a merry circle, waving joyfully at Zaki. Then, as if some signal had come, they all dived out of sight and were seen no more. Let's see if you can see them. There you go. Tom Taskis did live happily ever after, didn't he, with his merry maid? <clears throat> Zaki shook his head in wonder. He took out his tiny silver and gold shell from his pocket and gazed for a moment. I know what I'll do, he said to himself as he walked slowly home. When I am a grown man, I shall tell this story to my dear wife and my children, so that the tale is remembered for all time. And that's what he did. Neither Tom Taskis or the merry maid nor a single mer child was ever seen again in Zena. That's what they say. But all that remain are the words of Zaki's story and a special oak chair with the carving of the strange sea creature that still stands in the church as a reminder of when the merry maid came to Zena to stand and walk on Cornish land. Miraz.